Welcome to this introduction lecture about surface topography and roughness. Well, surface topography and roughness, uh, that's more or less the same thing, but uh, topography is for me the 3D landscape, while roughness is more, a, could be a 2D measure, it could be a, a more a measure of how rough a surface is. So this lecture is aiming to increase the understanding for how roughness influences uh, tribology. So I have a tribology focus. My name is Roland Larsson. I'm from Lulu University of Technology, from the tribology group there. Okay, let's start or continue. Uh, before saying too much, I want you to stop the, the video and think about a few things. And that's uh, from a tribology point of view, what do you think is the best type of roughness? How, how rough or how smooth should the surface be to, to get a kind of optimum? Is, is the, actually the best thing to have a perfectly smooth surface? Is, is that the best thing? Think about that. Stop the video for a while and, and, uh, and think about it. Okay, now I hope you have been thinking about it a little bit and I can of course say that the answer is shouldn't be too rough and shouldn't be too smooth. It's, uh, it's always like that in, in, uh, in the reality that it's always something in between that is the best. If you make a surface too rough, for example, and you, you also make one surface rough and hard, you will penetrate into the other surface, into the softer surface and, and create plastic deformations which are permanent and you actually damage the surface. And, and the asperities, they also stop the other surface moving. So it's, it causes a lot of friction and we call that abrasive friction and, and the damage is called abrasive wear. If you make it too smooth, on the other hand, you create a large area of contact and uh, so the contact pressure is, is uh, much lower, so you may not have any plastic deformation and so you don't damage the surface in that way. But since you create a, a big uh, uh, contact spot and uh, then you have adhesive forces in the contact spot that may create a lot of friction and eventually also wear because the, the atom on one surface may not understand that uh, that uh, it's not on the same surface as the other surface so so especially if the if the two surfaces are made of the same material so that both uh, in both cases this gives us a motivation to understand roughness in a better way. So this is the topic of this video. So as I said, why study measure roughness? It's to understand this, how the tri uh, tribologic, different tribological applications are influenced by more how the roughness should be optimized for different tribological applications because it influences the surface stress if it if you get plastic deformation then you damage the surface for example it also influences the lubrication if you have if you have very rough surfaces it's more difficult to lubricate rough surfaces than smoother surfaces so so in that case a smooth surface is to prefer but uh, there are also problems in that case, if you have made two smooth surfaces, they will eventually come in contact and then you will get high adhesive forces in that case too. And of course, it influences friction, it influences wear. Uh, apart from tribology, you may also need to know about surface roughness if you are working with surface finishing. And if you if you are working with grinding and polishing, for example, you may you you need to be able to define how smooth a surface needs to be, and you need to tell 
how smooth a surface is and and uh, also if you if you think about uh, the appearance of a surface if it should look shiny or if it if it uh, should have a more matte uh, be, uh, appearance uh, how 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 will the surface roughness change in in these cases so it's uh, that's uh, one other reason and the electrical contacts that's uh, a, a third reason to study and measure surface roughness because in an electrical contact you want to have a good conductivity uh, you want the, the current to flow smoothly across uh, the interface so then you need to find a, a topography or a surface roughness that gives you a very good contact of the surfaces the same goes for heat conduction actually so it's uh, in some cases you want to cool uh, one surface by placing a, another surface in contact with that surface a cooler surface and and again the surface topography will will uh, have an influence on that cooling effect so that's my reasons to study surface roughness but the main reasons for me is to study surface roughness is of course tribology so so i will have almost completely a tribology focus on surface roughness here so. when you look up on a surface you can you can distinguish uh, between different scales and uh, so surface roughness is definitely a, a multi-scale problem so if you have a component it it has a certain form or a certain shape so in this case you have a some kind of a, a cylindrical surface on top of that you have a you have a, a waviness maybe if you zoom in to that surface you may have some waviness coming from the manufacturing for example it could be some vibrations during manufacturing and if you zoom in again you you find that you also have some roughness on the waviness and this is what we call the roughness this is normally what is creating the tribological uh, or determining the tribological behavior of a surface but one should also remember that you have roughness on the roughness so it's, uh, it's if you keep on zooming in you have you find even smaller features on the small features so so it depends on a little bit where the problems occur or and what is important to study so i'm coming back to that uh, if you make a, a textured surface it's the same uh, it's this is a kind of artificial texture made on the surface but also in that case you have roughness on the surface and roughness on the roughness in that case too so 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 what I'm trying to say here is that surface roughness is a multi-scale problem and uh, you, you have to think of, you have to uh, define yourself what on what level you should uh, study the roughness so again this is a typical picture uh, showing the difference between form waviness and roughness form is of course a long wavelength in the in the surface topography it's normally uh, very long to uh, here i wrote i found somewhere that it could be uh, 1000 times the amplitude so it's uh, it's uh, very much longer features in the x direction here than in the y direction while roughness are the very short ones and waviness is in between and again there are no clear limits here we don't really know that we have to determine that from time to time it, it, it is a little bit determined by the tribological contact so if you have a, a contact uh, in between a ball and a raceway in a bearing for example the the contact may have a, a length of one millimeter then it's interesting to measure the roughness on a on a length scale a little maybe around one millimeter or less than one millimeter it's not interesting to measure it on 15 millimeters so but what is shape and roughness depends on the size of the tribo contact you may say uh, conformity is a word also that is uh, often mentioned when it comes into tribology and lubrication <clears throat> 
we normally did distinguish between these two extremes in the right uh, in the leftmost picture you have a rolling element bearing where you have very non-conformal surfaces so here is the form is in such a way that the, the form gives you a non-conformal uh, configuration while in the right hand uh, picture you have a journal typical journal bearing and then the the load is distributed on a larger area and 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 then the surface roughness could be interesting to to uh, uh, measure also on a, on a leng longer length scale here for example from here to here maybe that's a, a interesting measure while in in this case it's only the the tiny contact between two one of the rolling elements and the raceway that is important so so the the roughness is only need only needs to be determined in a in a fraction of a millimeter or so Where does it come from then, uh, the surface roughness? Well, it comes from the production process, how you manufacture the surface. If you use turning, grinding, polishing, you put some coatings on, for example. It comes also from the material structure if it's a, and the microstructure of the material. If it's a brittle material, you normally create the sharp corners. Uh, when, you, when, you, when you create a new surface, you you create sharp corners while a more ductile material doesn't give you that so it's the atom atomic structure or the microstructure that is uh, determining this uh, uh, on on the on the very fine micro level the use of the surfaces does also play a role of course so if you wear the surface the the surface roughness changes if you run it in in the in the beginning you 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 change it slightly you, you run it in it's uh, this is a very important change of the surface roughness it doesn't change very much but it changes sufficiently much to make the tribology much better you could say but there are many other processes going on here so corrosion for example could be one one uh, process that changes the surface roughness you know, creates new surface irregularities. One thing to remember is that surfaces are not as rough as you may expect. You normally see a picture or your illustration of a surface roughness of this type, but then you must recall or remember that uh, the magnification is different in different directions. So in the in the vertical direction, you may have a, uh, a magnification 5,000 in this case, while in the horizontal direction only 100, and that makes the asperities to look very sharp. And here they are more than 45 degrees, and they aren't that sharp. In reality, they are much smoother. So if you if you increase the magnification also in the vertical or in the horizontal direction you see here that when you have the the same magnification in both directions you can barely see the asperities so the the slopes are are normally very small they are rarely steeper than 10 degrees and after you have been using the surface for a while they are normally around one degree or or less so so if you have heard sometimes saying that putting two surfaces together is like putting austria in contact with switzerland it's not really correct it's more like putting the netherlands in contact with the belgium so so have that in mind when you think about tribology and uh, surfaces in contact even if we keep on illustrating the surfaces as the as the lower profile here in this picture A few words about how to measure topography also. Uh, the most uh, used technique, at least in uh, some years ago, uh, is the stylus profilometer. That is a, that is a kind of uh, instrument where you have a, a stylus uh, which is moved, uh, it's in mechanical contact with the surface, and you just measure the motion up and down when you move the transducer along the surface you can scan you only scan in 2d then but you can scan several times at different uh, parallel 
tracks, so then you get the kind of 3D uh, in that way. Uh, a more modern technique is the optical uh, methods, and you get a 3D uh, illustration or 3D topography directly. There are at least two methods you can use, interferometry and confocal microscopy. And the third one is a little bit the same as the stylus profilometers. It's the scanning probe microscopy or, or for example, the atomic force microscopy, where you use the same technique as the stylus, but on a very much smaller scale. So you, you, you can uh, uh, resolve very fine features of the surface. And you, so, uh, so you actually, you, you find smaller features than with the optical methods and significantly smaller features than with the, uh, the stylus profilometers. It's important to remember still that uh, measuring topography is, is something that is a little bit a statistical thing. You can measure the same surface with the same technique, but you barely get the same numbers in the end. And that's because the techniques themselves have some problems, coming back to that soon. And uh, it's also important that if you don't measure exactly the same spot, the variation, the statistical variation is relatively large on the surface. So, so there are many, many uh, things to consider when you measure topography. We're coming back to that in a later video. Uh, yes, a few words about the optical profilometer, which has been very often used now in the past uh, 10, 20 years now in, in tribology. Then you get directly, you get a, a 3D landscape of, of the surface like this one. Here you see some, some grooves maybe coming from grinding or, and here you have some other groove here coming from maybe a ball has been rolling here, creating a, a, a kind of a track, a wear track. A typical measurement area is a square millimeter and uh, you have a very good resolution in height. It could be single nanometers actually. Uh, so this is an example of a, of a surface measured with the optical profilometry and uh, it's a color the color uh, scale here tells you about uh, the height. So the, the red spots are the highest uh, peaks and uh, the yellow is the average and the blue ones are the valleys. And in this case, uh, we were actually able to measure the, exactly the same spot uh, of a new surface and a run-in surface. The performance of these two surfaces is extremely big difference. This, the run-in surface can can operate much longer and much better than the new surface. But you see that the difference in, in appearance is pretty small. It's almost the same. The valleys are the same more or less, and uh, while well, the peaks are a little bit lower. Here is a number SQ, which tells you a little bit about the average height of the, uh, of the, of the pattern of the topography. It's has been reduced slightly, but not very much. Coming back to that also when we talk about how to quantify surface roughness. Uh, there are some problems in all these techniques. Uh, in stylus profilometers, for example, you have a problem with the tip radius. It's, you can't make it perfectly sharp, so, so it, it has some finite uh, uh, size of the of the tip radius, and that means that you can't come down into the very fine valleys. So you you miss the the finest valleys in that way. You might also damage the surface if you if you have a, a very soft surface. So then you can make a replica. You you make a mold of the surface and you measure that instead. <clears throat> in optical method, uh, maybe the the biggest problem is that it's an expensive equipment, so so it's maybe not used by uh, any company, any research group. <coughs> it's also uh, important that it has a good reflectivity because you you need to have you need to compare the the reflection from the surface with a with a, a 
kind of reference surface and if you if you don't have any reflection you don't get any signal back to compare with so that could be a problem <clears throat> could also be a problem if you have some transparent films on the surface that makes the optical technique uh, confused uh, when it comes to scanning probe microscopy it's uh, again expensive it's maybe even more expensive and uh, and uh, it's also very sensitive it's it requires some skills to use that e equipment and uh, you measure on a very very small tiny area and uh, and using that numbers on that small area may lead to misinterpretation of the of the whole surface uh, surface roughness <clears throat> this is from a study we made some years ago that to where we compared the optical profilometer and the AFM technique and uh, this is the Abbott curve uh, and uh, we are coming back to uh, what the Abbott curve is but it it uh, in short it describes the height distribution from the highest peak to the lowest valley uh, for a surface and uh, and so this is a kind of distribution of the of the from the highest to the lowest peak and you can see that the AFM gives you one distribution while the optical interferometry gives you another one <coughs> so so that's also something you have to take into account you shouldn't compare AFM numbers with the uh, optical profilometer numbers so that's a kind of introduction to surface roughness now soon you can watch a movie or video on how to quantify surface roughness too thank you very much